Air Washington DC TV host spoke about the alarming fascist rise in India under BJP. Mehdi Hassan, television host from Washington DC, spoke on his show, clearly distraught about how Narendra Modi and his party, the BJP, are bent on creating a lost Hindu kingdom called Hindu Rashtra, openly championing Hindu nationalist supremacist ideology. He said in alarm that scholars are now literally warning about an impending genocide in India. Hassan said in his show that minorities such as Muslims, Christians, and others are facing the greatest threats to their existence. He pointed out that Mahatma Gandhi was assassinated by Nathuram Godse from the RSS, who are Hindu nationalists, drawing a parallel to the white supremacists in the USA who are still the fringe. He said in horror, "Imagine if the white supremacists could get trained and get politically organized, as is the RSS, who were founded in 1925, deeply into the politics of Mussolini and Hitler." He said a senior member of the RSS, Palash Ghosh, wrote an article gloating about the race pride of Nazi Germany, as did Sadashiv Golwalkar, who wrote to keep up the purity of the nation and its culture. Germany shocked the world by have purging the country of Semitic races, the Jews. National pride at its highest has been manifested here. Germany has also shown how well nigh impossible it is for races and cultures. having differences going to the root to be assimilated into one united whole a good lesson for us in hindustan to learn and profit by mehdi hasan specified that the hindutva nationalist movement should not be confused with the religion hinduism he said that the 2011 norway attacks referred to in norway as 20 to july or as 20 to 7 by norwegian far right domestic terrorists and as bearing brevik who killed 77 people in dreadful bomb attack cited hindutva in his 1500 page manifesto pledging military support to the nationalists in the indian civil war and the deportation of all muslims from india and as bearing brevik said that the far right islamophobic movements in india and europe should learn from each other because our goals are more or less identical and even added a link to the rss website Mehdi Hasan said that while the RSS is scary what is even more frightening is how politically successful they have been Hasan went on to say that PM Modi was a long time organizer in the RSS earlier and is now head of the RSS's political party affiliate the BJP He said that during the time of the horrific Gujarat massacre in 2002 Modi was in charge of Gujarat at the time when police had orders to allow the Hindu mobs to attack the Muslims kill them and set their homes on fire The pogrom went on for 3 days uninterrupted with no help from the government and in fact the police stood by and watched while the Hindutva mobs burned Muslim homes stores hotels and restaurants Muslims were burned to death during the raging massacre. We've been covering the global rise of the far right on this show for some time. There is of course Vladimir Putin and his ties to far right groups in Russia and beyond. But we've also discussed people like Hungary's Viktor Orban and Marine Le Pen getting more than 40% of the vote in the French election over the weekend. They're all kind of familiar and somewhat connected even. But if you think these leaders are bad, You need to meet India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He and his far-right Hindu nationalist party the BJP are bent on creating a lost Hindu kingdom. They call it the Hindu Rashtra. They've been in office since 2014 openly championing Hindu nationalist supremacist ideology. Scholars are now literally warning about genocide there. Minorities from Christians to Muslims and beyond are facing the greatest threats to their existence since India became independent in 1947. In fact, speaking of independence, Remember Mahatma Gandhi? In 1948 he was assassinated by a Hindu extremist, a man named Nathuram Godse. Godse was a former member of the far-right Hindu nationalist paramilitary volunteer group known as the Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh or RSS. Imagine if the world's white supremacists had one organized paramilitary group where they could all train together and get politically organized. Yeah, exactly. Founded in 1925, they were really into the politics of Mussolini and Hitler, the RSS. A senior founding member wrote about how he was inspired by Nazi Germany, which displayed quote race pride at its highest and was a good lesson for use in India. 
The extremist ideology binding the RSS is a kind of Hindu supremacy and nationalism known as Hindutva, which, to be clear, should not be confused with the religion of Hinduism. Hinduism good, Hindutva not so good. In fact, Hindutva ideology has been really influential among some of the worst people, and not just in India. If you remember the Muslim-hating, far-right Norwegian mass murderer Anders Breivik, the man who massacred 77 people in Norway in 2011, he cited Hindutva in his 1,500-page manifesto, pledging support for the deportation of all Muslims from India. He says that far-right Islamophobic movements in Europe and India should, quote, learn from each other because, quote, our goals are more or less identical. He even put a link to the RSS website in the online resources section of his manifesto. You get the idea, right? This is a group and an ideology that is really scary. But what's even more frightening is how politically successful they've been. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is a man in charge of leading a country of 1.4 billion people, almost four and a half times the US population. He's been re-elected as prime minister, and yet he was a longtime organizer in the RSS and is now head of the RSS's political party affiliate, the BJP. It shouldn't come as a surprise that Modi and his party, the BJP, were in charge of the state of Gujarat during the horrific 2002 riots there. Second day, Hindu mobs attacked Muslims in towns across the western state of Gujarat. Despite uh, shoot-to-kill orders issued to police in one village, Hindus set fire to Muslim homes, killing 30 people. Witnesses say the police stood by and watched as crowds burned Muslim-owned stores, hotels and restaurants. In one village, 27 Muslims died when angry mobs set their homes on fire. In another village, seven Muslims were burned to death in a bakery. It's estimated that between one to 2,000 people were killed in Gujarat, the vast majority of the Muslims. Many Muslim women were even raped. Western researchers have called it a one-sided systemic pogrom backed by the BJP. Human rights groups, both Indian and international, also say Modi and his local government were complicit. Some even say the riots might have been premeditated. Even the US government seemed to recognize Modi's culpability at the time, banning him from coming to the United States. Until, of course, he became prime minister in 2014. And then, well, we were pretty much buddies again. Barack Obama even wrote Modi's 2015 Time 100 article calling him a reformer in chief. If Obama mainstreamed Modi and everything he represented, Trump took him to the altar and tied the knot, marrying the far right politics of the world's two biggest democracies. Here in Houston, Texas, thousands attended the 2019 Howdy Modi rally, AKA the Trump Modi love fest. I present to you my friend, a friend of India, a great American president, Mr. Donald Trump. Prime Minister Modi is doing a truly exceptional job for India and for all of the Indian people. For all of the Indian people? For all of them? Since his coming into office, since Modi came into office, hate crimes against minorities have skyrocketed, from Dalits to Christians and most of all towards Muslims. Lynchings. Yeah, lynchings of Muslims rumored to have eaten or even transported cows, a holy animal for Hindus. Muslims being hacked to death while their attackers chant anti-Muslim slogans. Extremist priests calling for the rape of Muslim women. As the BBC put it last year, unprovoked attacks on Muslims by Hindu mobs have become routine in India, but they seem to evoke little condemnation from the government. This Modi government is complicit in all of this. Last week, authorities in Delhi took nine bulldozers through a city and destroyed parts of a mosque while people were inside and razed dozens of homes and commercial buildings most belonging to Muslims. Modi's government also claims almost 2 million Muslims whose families originally came from Bangladesh generations ago aren't rightful citizens of India. And if they can't prove they are, they'll be sent to what the government calls transit camps. These are mass detention centers that critics have likened to concentration camps. With boundary walls, watchtowers, there are already six of them with thousands of detainees. Behind every shocking supremacist policy, you'll find shocking supremacist rhetoric. It's the same in India. A survey from one of India's prominent news channels found that hate speech from politicians skyrocketed by 500% under Modi's leadership. 
Modi's right-hand man, Home Minister Amit Shah, described migrants from neighbouring Bangladesh as termites at a 2019 campaign rally. A man who may likely succeed Modi as Prime Minister is Yogi Adityanath, currently in charge of India's largest state, which has a population almost the size of the US. He said India's top Muslim actor is no different to a terrorist. He's called Muslim lawmakers a green virus infecting the country. One count found more than 100 instances of hate speech and mentions of Hindutva in Adyanath's speeches from last November till February. And it's not just the BJP. Have a listen to Pooja Shankun Pandey, a leader of another Hindu nationalist group back in December. <laughs> This is dark stuff. A reminder that when we talk about the far right, it's not just the white far right. When we talk about supremacist ideology, it's not just white supremacy. There is a global far right movement. Hindutva is part of it. And while some in the West have been keen to call out the Orbans and Le Pens and Putins of this world, not many of them say a word about what Modi is up to. Joe Biden even invited the Indian Prime Minister to his democracy summit at the White House in December. What will it take for Western governments to speak out on this issue? How many more Indian Muslims or Christians need to die? 